Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not in the Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Whole Little Queen Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also named, oh, sorry, also known as um, Slater Jackson, and for you freaky motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episodes, we will be discussing, no, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Jesus, fix it all. We will actually be talking about online versus traditional dating. Let me get my life together, y'all. I, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. But with me, I am blessed to have a brilliant Black man with me who's also an author, Chancellor. How you doing today? What's going on, V? You good? Blessings and balance to everyone that's tuning in right now, man. Shout out to y'all. I appreciate it. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Hey, man. Every day is a great day. The choice is ours. Oh, amen to that. So uh, since this is your first time being on the podcast, do you mind letting everybody know who the fuck you are? Like, what do you do? What you got going on for yourself? All the great things. Oh, me. So the name is Chancellor K. Jackson from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, If you're from Atlanta, and so you're familiar with the geographics of Atlanta, I'm from Smyrna specifically. um, But all in all, you know what I'm saying down to earth, humble dude, very laid back, easy going, um, wise individual, natural born leader, um, motivating and encouraging, um, very uplifting, um, influential, uh, nurturing, um, considerate, selfless, and all in all, just you know what I'm saying, just a breath of fresh air for sure. Um, I played football the vast majority of my life. Got to play throughout high school and uh, college um, down at Stetson University. Go Hatters. Stetson out of uh, Florida, um, if for those that aren't familiar with where Stetson is. But I obtained my bachelor's degree in communication and media studies. Um, after I graduated from college, I landed my first job teaching English to children in China. Um, and I was out there for six months before I got locked up out there and did 14 days in a Beijing Penitentiary. Um, Came back to America once I was uh, released um, and started writing 14 Days in Beijing. Also continued to teach and got into coaching, uh, football as well as life coaching, um, at-risk teens. And we use 14 Days as part of our uh, skills. Um, I'm my own company, which all my books are published through. I also coach aspiring authors out there. So anybody that's interested in or have have an idea of a book that they want to write but don't know how to get it on paper I already done wrote the book but don't know how to go about publishing it hey man it's happening with your boy i could definitely walk you through that process also uh rent cars out as well I have a car rental service um shit yeah man that's me <laughs> just running a couple of marathons trying to get established that's it man this is a multifaceted individual, y'all. This man got multiple hats, and we love him. Uh, we love a motherfucker with multiple hats. That means you're fashionable. That's look at God. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what are the titles of? Um, you wrote three books, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, what What's the name of all three, so people can go ahead, you know, purchase those? And yes, information sir. will be in the show notes too, because you know, all information is in the show notes. Mm-hmm. So you got my first book, 14 Days in Beijing, pretty much my experience getting locked up in China, just the whole incarceration process. And in addition, I have You Love and You Learn and Real Love Never Dies, a two book series. I mean, a two book saga, but all in all, all three books is one long series 
But um, the romance saga is pretty much a man's first step towards gaining emotional intelligence, all in all. But it's also a prequel of 14 Days and post-14 Days as well. Mm, child, not, not that he mentioned emotional intelligence. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is nothing to do with the uh, actual episode, but do you, you remember that, um, that viral video of the Black uh, woman who's a therapist who was just like uh, pretty much saying... Uh, well, you know, she was targeting black men specifically, but just saying black men, you need to be uh, emotionally intelligent. What was your stance on that incident when it happened? Because I, I, even, oh, what I, didn't was see it. I didn't even see it. I don't even know what you're talking about. What? So you, you definitely need to look into it. Uh, I will yeah. say just to be on the record, I was definitely on her side because I know way too many black men who do not have the emotional capacity <laughs> to connect and empathize with people so it's like we do need therapy we need therapy <laughs> <laughs> therapy is important people it is very important like i had a friend break down okay so i have a track record of black men crying in front of me and it's, it's <laughs> and it's i know part of that is my, my history and life coaching and whatnot but it's like sometimes i'm just like look i i told you we just let like I'm not trying to be a healer in this moment. <laughs> I'm just trying to help a friend out. But so how how uh how was your discovery of yourself in um becoming more emotionally intelligent? Uh what was that process like for you? Yeah, so like similar to most men, um I was raised in a single parent household. My mama raised me and my brother. Um Pops was in the picture, but you know what I'm saying, we wasn't in the house for sure. Um so we have we have a great we have a good relationship now are we the closest hell now but we have a good we have a good relationship um but he was you know what I'm saying he wasn't there so she really pretty much raised us and more background on her side of the family just love and happy fulfilling relationships is just that's just not a thing mm. um and including hers she has five siblings so six kids in total out of all six kids i think one is married jeez yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got plenty of cousins. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know saying? Just something that uh, really wasn't um, showcased in our tribe. You know what I'm saying? Even her parents. She grew up with both parents in the house and everything. That wasn't the best relationship. You know what I'm saying? At least a good representation of what a healthy and fulfilling love life should be. Um, even my pops. My pops grew up with both parents in the house. But he was he a rolling stone, so I can only imagine where he got that behavior from. You know what I'm saying? It, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, so mm. God, you know, it's from somewhere. So that's just how I was, just in a nutshell. Um, and then I really wasn't even that attractive at first. I didn't glow up to about like eighth grade. I started glowing up then. That's when I started playing football. So I lost the uh, baby fat and started getting swole and cut up, and I started growing my locks. So then I started gaining the female attention. But I'm not experienced in this field for real, for real. So it was like, mm. shit, I really don't even know what the fuck I'm doing <laughs> entirely. But um, I dated plenty of girls in, middle, in eighth grade that year, but all them relationships lasted on average like two and a half weeks. Mm. And then uh, going into high school, I was like, yeah, I ain't fuck a relationship, but we should be fresh in high school, boy. They don't do that to yourself. <laughs> so um, it really wasn't until, uh, yeah, freshman year, freshman year, I was in class, we was in PE class and, we had free time and shit, so I'm just sitting on the bleachers with other students, and then the, the topic of conversation was every, uh, your favorite sex position. And at that point in time, I was still a virgin. I'm just like, hold on, nigga, we freshmen in high school. We just like, <laughs> like <laughs> some of us just became teenagers. Like, how y'all already having this conversation? Mm. So it was just an uh, awkward moment for me because I'm like, damn, this is clearly something that everybody seems to be well experienced in to be having a conversation like this, but I just got to try to fit in the best I can. Um, so I was like, well, shit, I got to hurry up and lose this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't be the eyeball out. Um, so, and it really went hard. Like I said, I was already attractive at that point. So I had plenty of females that was choosing on me. I just wasn't really giving them the time of day for real, for real like that. I didn't entertain them, but as far as like trying to be romantic, hell nah. Um, but it was, I had two, no, I think it was one girl I was, I did, was really attracted to, and I really did, I liked her a lot, 
Um, but she ended up choosing another nigga over me. So after she did that, I was like, right, fuck this shit. I'm finna goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Just finna do me. Really, all I cared about at that point in time anyway was playing football. My goal was to play D1 football. So really, if it ain't had shit to do with that, fuck it. That's how my mindset was. And shit, that's how I was all four years. Um, and then senior year, of course, now football's coming to an end. So now I'm a little bit more open to, you know what I'm saying, taking on a female romantically. Um, tried with two different girls. And both of them blew up and backfired and blew up in my face. One other girl, she was dealing with another nigga the whole time. And uh, the other girl, she, <laughs> she, she ended up leaving me at the movie theater because we went Dutch um, as far as paying for the uh, tickets. So after that shit, I was just like, I was just like, man, fuck all this shit. I'm finna get ready to graduate. Nigga, I'm gonna be a freshman in college and I'm be playing college football. It don't matter. So, but so once I got into uh, college, oh yeah, it was, boy, it was, I was hell on wheels, boy. I was to my four. But I was, I wasn't like, I wasn't no, I was real though. I kept it real. That's one thing. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna keep it all the way 100, which I ain't gonna say, you know, dreams. <laughs> I ain't gonna do you, I ain't gonna do none of that. But we gonna vibe all that shit. The energy, we gonna, yeah, it's gonna be harmonious. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a vibe. But shit, this is all it's gonna be <laughs> for mm-hmm. shit. Um, so I, I was doing my thing for about three years. And then um, junior year, I was like, I was ready to try to settle down. And I tried two females at first. Neither one of them went through. And I was like, all right, boy, I'm finna go back to the old ways. Boy, I'm finna say, fuck this shit again. And then that's when I met Shouted, who I wrote, you know what I'm saying? Who is is a part of pretty much the premise of the romance novel. Um, That's when I met her. And now my whole perspective on just love and um, just being romantic has changed because at first I was like, fuck love, fuck all that shit, nigga. That shit a waste of time. Y'all niggas foolish. All, you know what I'm saying? I just talk, I looked down on it until I was immersed in it and one was able to accept love. That was pretty good. I can give love all day. I, that's the thing I do. That I, I can give love all day, but as far as just receiving, yeah, that's something I really wasn't, I ain't know how to do. Mm. Or at least you know what I'm saying, I wasn't willing to do with just anybody um so once i finally did do it and shit man that shit was beautiful it was a beautiful experience um and i grew a lot matured a lot um and all in all just made me want just better it sharpened me for sure for sure the entire experience um for whoever my final partner shall be (laughs) Hmm. um but that's real. And I, I think um, I'm, this is going back to um, something that you said a little bit earlier about uh, essentially not even have a role, having role models of what a healthy relationship would be like or just uh, having people around who are in like any kind of committed relationship or even showing love to each other. That I think that's the story of a lot of people of this age and even from those people older than us. Like, it's just that focus of you're just focusing heavily on yourself, not trying to accept love, not trying to be vulnerable to any kind of openness that anybody else can provide. It's easier to just put up that brick wall and not let something in that we, as I say, as a culture uh, or a society in whole, just want to keep people away. We want to keep people out there. And, and because we're doing that, we don't leave ourselves open to receive emotion, give emotion, or just embrace emotion at any kind of level. Um, so we find ourselves in a lot more superficial situations, um, not wanting to uh, really communicate with our par- partners, not wanting to express our needs, our desires, our wants. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, 
condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. Um, not wanting to uh, really communicate with our par partners, not wanting to express our needs, our desires, our wants. And it's just a, 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 cycl a cyclical loop of just tarnish relationships or heartbreak or hurt uh, like even the 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 myth of you have to hate your exes <laughs> or you yeah. have to be upset um, with your potential uh in-laws and stuff like that and it's like no you can have healthy relationships with these people regardless it's just being willing to allow that to happen yeah. um, but it's easier yeah. to not allow that to happen and close mm -hmm. the door on me and just to piggyback off of that like all my partners especially for the most part the partners i grew up around we all single parent children now when i got to college now i'm making friends that grew up in two two parent loving households and they are completely different you know what i'm saying they're completely different so i was like okay i can see i see <laughs> i see the differences and i had the whole go about just because of the foundation how the foundation was laid so yeah for sure you know what i'm saying so it's just a lot of unlearning and relearning. That's all it is. Facts. Well, that was a beautiful tangent that we went on. Uh, <laughs> it's a part of the show. It's a part of the show. We never know how it's really going to go until we get on. Uh, so the topic of discussion is online versus traditional dating. I know your preference because of our intake meeting, just so it could be on the record for the podcast, because I always ask people this anyways. Um, between the two, between online and uh, traditional dating, which one do you prefer most? Uh, traditional. For sure, just because the authenticity within it, you know what I mean? Especially when you just run into the individual on the humbug. Like, you wasn't expecting it, wasn't planned, just naturally. And then y'all just hit it off. And now, but it, with it being physical from the very first uh, interaction, you got more of a feel of this individual versus somebody behind the screen. Mm. You know what I mean? I get that. Like, I know for me, I, I definitely do enjoy that. Um, like, you know, when you meet up with somebody the first time that like, even if you just saw them at a distance, like for me, I do prefer online dating just for the ease of it. But it's nothing like when you really meet that person or really because um, you cannot really understand somebody's true chemistry through like an online space like the the communication you have it might be on the phone it might be through text whatever it is but when you have that in-person connection where you can it, it's going to sound weird but uh smell them you can uh you know what sense that they are uh, wearing you can feel their skin you can uh, really see who they are that like there's nothing that beats that level of intimacy uh, in being in those traditional settings. Uh, so I, I definitely get you there because it is a lot more authentic. Like uh, it's nothing like being around somebody and you accidentally screw up and like your walls break or something like that. Like you, you're trying to put on this image of being super perfect because you don't want to screw up and then something cr crazy happens. You're like, oh shit. And then you both like, from that, either laugh and enjoy that moment, or sometimes it is a deal breaker. But you know, those kind of <laughs> things. <laughs> oh, oh, Vulnerability, that is fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, something that you uh, we were talking about in the intake meeting was about building a bond. What mm -hmm. kind of things do you do to build a bond, build a bond with um, your potential partners, anyone that you're currently dating, or just in general? What, how do you build bonds with other people? Um, definitely, just got to spend time together for sure, um, and, and explore each other's interests. So whatever she like to do, shit, we gonna do that. We gonna, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna do a little bit of shit. I like to do, gonna do a little bit of, and now she, now we got a feel for each other's vibe. Now we can really find moves that can incorporate both or just, you know what I'm saying? We could just explore some whole new, uh, new other shit. You know what I'm saying? We just know each other. You know what I mean? Like not just know, but like, you know, somebody like the core of them. For sure, sure. 
I like that you mentioned explore like new things uh, because like the thing that really irks me is when people think that their partner is supposed to like everything that they like and they're supposed to like everything that they like. And I'm just like, no, y'all can have your own separate things and you can have certain things that you do have in common. But I feel as though having something that you two find interesting that's completely new to both of you is what really grows and connects a couple uh, whenever they're in those building phases or even uh, within a, the longevity of a relationship. How do you feel about finding new activities or joys with your partner? Um, shit, definitely um, the internet. Shit, you, depending on what you constantly looking up on your phone, it's going to, ads are automatically going to pop up. You know what I'm saying? That's geared towards that liking. So um, definitely internet plays a huge part. Like, oh, damn, bro, look at this shit. Especially folks be sending me TikToks. Hey, bro, TikTok is fucking this. I ain't, I'm not on TikTok. So it's just crazy to see people send me like, you can find anything you're looking for on TikTok. Like, damn, look for places in Atlanta. A, a plethora of just different videos. Like, oh, shit, bro, look at this. Oh, look at this. Like, shit, this little file. Let's, right, let's go try this place out. Let's go try this place out. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's really just what you see on in media tv shows they'd be be watching the movie together like hey but look at that in fucking amsterdam shit let's go to amsterdam type shit the idea my pop you know what i'm saying just I'm, just i'm just very uh spontaneous so <laughs> as an individual so you can rock with that hair yeah, we're gonna be lit mm, respect i respect that um i know like uh, well this is going back to the time when i was with my ex and uh we didn't really well, we had anime in common and we uh, separate the thing that we really had like a huge diverse uh, perspective on was food because this mofo was only like, I only like, like, what was it? Uh, fries and fucking chicken nuggets. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what kind of diet is that? There's like all this other food out here, but that's, that was his thing. Um, but um over you know months or whatnot uh, and just getting to know each other even more um we like he learned more about like i like to do adventurous things like i want to be out there and like um go laser tag and go go karting and all this other stuff and he's a little bit more reserved yeah. um not to say this was the issues that you know brought the relationship to an end but i think uh having those kind of discussions with your partner and um like you said, going to Amsterdam if you uh, if you got that, or go, like looking at new movies or uh, finding new interests. Oh, it's, it's it it brings adventure back into any relationship in a way. Like there's nothing like watching a new show then discussing the episode with somebody. Okay. And if I'm watching this with my partner, they're here, uh, I'm here. And we could have this whole last conversation. Like, what what did you think about this first episode? Like, did you like it? Did you hate it? Are we going to go to episode two or three? Like, what are we going to do here? Uh, and I think that's, <laughs> weirdly to say, I think that's part of the flaw in that Netflix and chill era that we had. Because it's like nobody really was, you know, really watching the films or whatever. But uh, at the same time, if you were watching a TV show, you're not talking about that often with the, the, your partner. Because the main goal of that <laughs> to, you know, get some like <laughs> all right we comfortable now can we start fucking kind of thing yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that became the norm of the netflix and chill era uh what's your perspective on that netflix and chill yeah um shit yeah it's like it's like an icebreaker the <laughs> 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 like shit show especially when y'all both know what type of time it is mm -hmm. uh, i think it's kind of childish I feel like niggas gotta do all of that. Like, come on now. But shit, sometimes you just gotta do that because you know what I'm saying, just to ease the, the tension in the room and shit. Yeah, yeah. But I don't even really watch Netflix and shit for real. I don't really be watching TV. I like listening to music mm. mainly. Yeah. So for I would say for you uh, to engage with the partner in terms of like exploring something new. That's like, oh, your audio went out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, uh, go back and fix that. Um, but essentially, what I was asking, like uh, for yourself, uh, would you say that you're more of the type that um, will like to share playlists with your partner to uh, uh, like understand their vibe and see what y'all have in interest? And would you create a playlist with your partner? Not not like oh, um, this is only for sex or whatever, but like a playlist of all y'all's favorite songs to like listen to on a joy ride somewhere or whenever y'all enter the home and just want to jam out and shit like that is that something that you would do yeah yeah goddamn really it was more than likely when we chilling i'm gonna be playing some music you know what i mean so i'm definitely gonna ask you okay what you know what, I'm saying? what type of music you listen to? really i'm gonna ask you what you stream your music off of if you on apple music like i am i bet What's your uh, profile? That's all I need right there. Give me a profile. I just I'll go listen to your whole. I'll start playing your shit for real. You know what I'm saying? I'll start playing your shit and just so I can really just see where your. Where, you know, see so you can tell a lot about a person. You know, what I'm saying just based on the music they listen to and how they go about structuring it for sure. You know what I mean? And I, that's something I take serious. I definitely got multiple playlists on Apple Music. I got you know, my profile lit. <laughs> my profile lit. <laughs> So what is your music science? So uh, you say that you can tell a lot about a person, uh, which I do agree. But um, what 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 is it that you take away from people based off of their playlists? Like, um, let's say if they have a lot of R&B versus if they have a lot of reggae um, versus reggaeton or if they even yeah. just have like um, just um, rap. Like what? What do you? What is your takeaways for those specific genres? So you just know somebody vibe. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, listen to straight NBA young boy nudie and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, right, this is a very aggressive. <laughs> At least they, you know what I'm saying? They probably won't even be aggressive, like how they, you know what I'm saying? Naturally, but just as far as how they come off might be aggressive or it's going to be some form of aggression in some form of fashion because that's what they listen to on the record. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this music shit is really, um, music is, man, it's so, I feel it's so in depth. It's just, especially from a psych, psychological standpoint, what music does to humans, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like depending on what you listen to is or can manifest in your life. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So you listen, you got some r and I know you chill. You know what I'm saying? You got some soul to you for sure as well. You know what I mean? Um, reggae, oh shit. You, you you got the vibes. You know what I'm saying? You with all the vibes and shit. You know what I mean? Um, uh, pop, shit. You like to follow trends. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you like to follow trends. Gospel, hell yeah. Okay, sanctified, holy. <laughs> for sure. You know what I mean? So... I feel like that um, pop was shade, but um, not not. I didn't feel the shade. Like for <laughs> I, I personally don't listen to pop like that, but I I feel like there was some shade in that, and I accept that shade because I thought of some people who only listen to pop, and I'm just like, you know what? Mm, that's all they do. They on the next trend, and I'm just like, I don't even recognize you no more. Like, you, <laughs> like who the fuck are you? Oh, <laughs> Look, we got the we got the curly bangs. Yes, do you? <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> the baby hairs are slick and smooth <laughs> to the gods. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, but I love you, but I really do. Uh, I I I I just can't do the trend things because it 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 shifts so much. It shifts so much, and I'm just right. like I can't forget who I am again. No, we don't know. <laughs> Some people never knew who they were. Oh, you're right. You're right. Whew. Now, uh, mm-hmm. another thing that we ended up talking about, getting back to the, you know, subjects at hand, uh, another <laughs> thing that we ended up talking about in an intake meeting was, like, whenever you're out and about in these streets and whatnot, mm-hmm. mind your business and uh, finding interest in other people, that you actually prefer when the woman, like, approaches you rather than seeking them out. Um, do you mind explaining that a little bit more? That's just how it's been all my life, honestly. Like, once I started, like, once I I became attractive to female eye, shit, I ain't, I ain't have to do much. <laughs> I ain't have to do shit at all. I was so lazy being focused on football. Like, that's really all I gave a fuck about. 
Um, I did, still had a social life at that point, but at the end of the day, football was the end goal. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really care to, you know what I mean, chase females and all that other shit. I'm chasing dreams. Um, but that didn't mean they ain't pursue me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, hey, yeah, I, that's what I was been, I'm used to. I've been like that my whole life. Me and my brother, my strip. My brother, he was he was pulling when we was younger. He uh, he was pulling females way before I was. So and he's even man, he's so antisocial. He's he's worse than I am, but still it, <laughs> I'm talking about female be breaking their neck looking at him. He won't even <laughs> No mind, like this is how we are. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Um like <clears throat> I was definitely like on like the you know the spectrum of introvert and all that other stuff and like like even for myself at times I don't mind you know like reaching out to somebody most if I find them cute and very attractive but I don't I don't like to make the first move most definitely when it comes to like meeting up with somebody or um even a hookup like half the time I don't be thinking about sex <laughs> but like uh, for me because it's kind of going off of what we were talking what you mentioned earlier about you know with the Netflix and chill situation how that's kind of the you know uh, the icebreaker to warm warm a woman up but for me if you can't say the statement of I want to fuck or I want to have sex I, I'm not paying any attention to it <laughs> Like it has to be stated. If it's not oh, stated, then it's not going to happen. Oh, uh, and I think that's a part of my um, wanting to be approached uh, aspect rather than seeking it. Um, now, if I am going to be seeking it, I just say straight up, like, this is what my intentions are. What's up? Are you on the same page? If you're not, life is good. Um, has it? Has there ever been a point where you were more of the seeker um, versus uh, waiting for someone to approach, or it's always just been you waiting? Um, I wouldn't even say I wait. I wouldn't even be. I wouldn't even wait. Shit, I just if it happened, happened. If it don't, it don't. <laughs> On that type of time, shit. Goddamn. But if it do, then shit. All right, we lit. <laughs> we lit. Look at that. Now, shit. I can initiate everything then. I got a green light. I right, bet. I just, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to waste my time. He ain't trying to waste yours. So, you, because clearly you ain't trying to waste no time. So, I right, bet. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> For sure. So, um, how do you feel about that conversation of, um, well, not necessarily conversation, but that uh, idea of, um men having to be the predator in the in the romance situation um they have to be the one that's being active and rather than passive what's your perspective well i know for yourself you're on the more passive side of it but what is your perspective of that that um that belief that belief system that uh, standardized image of men have to be the uh, aggressor in the in relationships versus the passive uh, identity. That shit is just, just how it's old times. That's it. This is how it's always been, at least from, you know what I'm saying, our ancestors. That's how our ancestors were. Um, and, you, and the me media portrays it a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Really, you know what I'm saying? Should, that's what the media portrays a lot. Um, so it's just really a societal norm. That's just what it is. Um, but change is inevitable at the same time. So now shit is shifting, um, shifting gears like a motherfucker. <laughs> shifting gears like a motherfucker, boy. So um, it, I feel like now, I feel like women has always been aggressive. Like it's a, it's a lot of aggressive women out here. At least uh, as of now, they are. At least for me, like how it's been for me growing up, from old to goddamn my age, goddamn man, it's. Women be shooting they shot for sure. Some of them just real slick with it. Some of them straight out into your face with it. Mm -hmm. um, some, you know what I'm saying, they playing it just like you. You know what I'm saying? Two can play that game type shit. It's like, and it's more of a mind game for real. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you can feel the vibe. And it's like, just one of us is waiting to see who's going to say something. But just knowing that I feel that vibe, that's enough for me. <laughs> that's enough for me. Like, all right. Um, do you have any regrets of not approaching someone 
that you somewhat felt the vibe for and it just never went anywhere? Hell no. Nah. There's so many women this, on this motherfucking planet. Oh my goodness. We talking about billions of people on this, on planet Earth. So that's a good a good portion of that is women. And I think it's more women than men. I think so too. So she <laughs> <laughs> there's options. You know, that's a that's a thing that I've been trying to like help a lot of people understand. Cause you know, when someone gets fixated on a person who um either broke up with them or uh, they're no longer together for whatever reason it is, to understand that hey, there's like billions of people on this damn planet like mm -hmm. i get like in your local area this that might have been the baddest person but <laughs> we we live we live in a space where you you have travel <laughs> so yeah. you can always visit someplace you, uh if 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 it's possible you can move to a new city or you could just revisit somebody else that uh you know is out there like yeah it's a small uh knit community but come on, there's there's more than a thousand people in any city. So Let's go back to the first topic, goddamn uh internet day. Shit. Internet. <laughs> <laughs> right. <What? laughs> well, maybe you get fluid out somewhere. Come on. Now, um, before we uh, end up closing out this episode and getting into some Never Have I Ever, um, uh, one of the other things that we ended up talking about is like how essentially how to talk to other people and um, build on a conversation. So uh, essentially, whenever someone approaches you and you uh, start conversing, like how, how do you connect with people in conversation? Um, really just depend on what we're talking about, for real, for real. Um, but for the most part, we really get in depth, especially if like it's a mutual vibe there. We like, we just, just expand like how we've just been having this casual conversation, but clearly on topics, but we've been going off on these natural tangents. Like it's, it's shit. It'd be shit just like that. You know what I'm saying? Just peaking interest and a perspective and then just wanting to explore that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vice versa at the same time. All the knowledge is just getting to, to know each other. Mm, I get that. Like, um, do you ever, uh, ever use like icebreakers in conversations with other people that you're getting to know or you just wait for that natural flow um, just to see how they respond to something or um their communication style like yeah then i just use a natural flow for the show yeah yeah i really ain't got a lot of icebreakers just on the you know what i'm saying the throw off the top of the dome um, mm -hmm. yeah i just go for the natural flow for the show i'm the same way like uh, i know some friends who um who like do have like wonderful icebreakers and i'm just like i for me i just don't know when to throw those in um like or like <laughs> if i'm chatting with somebody we're out to dinner something like that i'm not thinking about okay what's something that can make them feel more comfortable because for me i feel as though you being there means that you're already comfortable enough to have a conversation um but yeah. Uh, I know, like, if I'm, like, at a bar or something like that, uh, I guess talk about the drink that the person... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of females approach me in the bar. At least, it, when they do, it'd be older. It's always the old. It'd be the older ones that be <laughs> hopping down. <laughs> older ones gonna hop down. Mm. But they be players. They, they be some players. They be smooth. Smooth little game. All right. <laughs> so, um... What's your perspective of superficial conversations, though? Shallow and pedantic. Mm, straight like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I I would say that's the deal breaker for you. Like if uh, if it's a surface level conversation that does doesn't go anywhere, it's just like, okay, yes. I probably might have to like communicate with somebody else. I can shoot the shit with you for sure, mm -hmm. but once 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 I say what. I need to say it, then that's just going to be it. <laughs> for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Until the next topic comes along, then <laughs> we, you know, we'll try it again. Yeah, that's real. Uh, for me, I, I personally cannot handle too much shallow conversation because after a while, I get bored. Uh, because, like, I'm not the type to WID on a regular basis. Like, 
if you have to ask me what am I doing every five minutes, we're not going to have a great conversation because it's the same fucking thing. Uh, or I really don't like whenever I'm asked, like if I do ask somebody what are they doing and they're just like chilling and I'm like, what does chilling mean? Like, are you watching TV? <laughs> are you just like relaxing? Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> what does chilling look like for you? Can we talk about that? If not, <laughs> then we're, we're wasting each other's time. <laughs> That's facts, though. That's facts, though. But really, um, I would say this will be a good place to go ahead and put a pin in that conversation and go to some Never Have I Ever. Um, So, Never Have I Ever um, been spanked with a belt, whip, or paddle? No. I definitely have. Well, um, you know, we're talking about from my mama type shit. See, that's the that's the thing. Um, I, I would say in terms of like upbringing, definitely's been spanked with the pot paddle, uh, well, yeah. with the belt. Um, it, sexually, uh, I have been spanked before uh, with the what was it? It was a flog. I have had like spanking, so I've done that. But for you, in terms of like sexual experiences, you have not. No. Nah. Is that something that you're ever willing to try? Um, I don't know. I don't think as of right now, I say no. Mm-hmm. Um, but shit, I know the older you get, the kinkier you get. So, shit. Because yeah. mm-hmm. look, after a while, you just stop giving a fuck. <laughs> you just like, <laughs> you know what? Let me see what this is about. I saw this random thing on YouTube or on the TikTok. Let me go ahead and see what this is about. <laughs> Um, and just for the audience, we will, we actually do have a kink episode. So y'all might as well make sure you subscribe so you can hear that conversation when it happens. Um, might bring this back up. Probably not. Um, (laughs) (laughs) would you like another question? For sure. So never have I ever had a sexual encounter in a public restroom. This book is after me. In a restroom? Nah. Oh, public restroom. Yes, I have. But shit it was vacant for sure so i have to say i've done the same and that was the night i almost went to jail so (laughs) ever since then i was like you know what i can't do that public stuff no more Mm -mm, we we don't fuck with that no more (laughs) (laughs) i'm good on that like i've gotten offers um like oh we can go i I know a spot and i'm just like "Mm -mm, if that spot is not a house i don't i don't fuck with it i can't <laughs> well, um, did you have fun in that restroom uh it was an experience for sure um me and two partners who was uh running a train <laughs> on a girl <laughs> we was running a train on a girl and it was in an apartment pool uh public bathroom restroom got down that shit was interesting because it was at night too so it was like well it was dark as fuck in there so we got them using the flashlights on our phone because we wouldn't turn the light on and you know what i'm saying see, see the light from up in the door and shit uh, so but yeah we all all three of us i tr- i tried to hit i really couldn't do it so i was like I, i'm good the other two they did their thing and then shit, we dropped it <laughs> Her friend was outside waiting. <laughs> what? So her homegirl didn't want to be a part of the, the the party. Nah, she was like, "Nah, I'm good." So she just waited outside. It was cold too, so she was I'm like, "She thugging." So I then we, you know, what I'm saying, dropped them back off at the, at their crib, and then shit, we went home. I dropped them all, or dropped my partners off. Yeah, well, I, I'm a huge supporter of like threesomes, foursomes, orgies, like look, whatever the, the multi-partner play is, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Like, have a good time. As long as everything is consensual and everybody is like okay. there for pleasure, enjoy yourselves, people. Like, yes, ain't no judgment around here. So, would you like or would you rather? Would you like or would, you rather? would, you like or would, you, would I rather what? Um, a question. Oh, shit. Sure. So, would you rather take a lover with terrible body odor or one with horrible, uh, horribly bad breath? Breath. Hmm. Interesting. Why the breath? Because I feel like that's just one aspect of the body mm-hmm. that we have to mask. 
<laughs> and, and I feel like that's a lot more manageable and tolerable versus just straight out bo because now that shit coming from all the hot spots. So mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah. I get that. Uh, I will say um, for myself, I will go with the bad breath as well. Um, mostly because like one, I'm not like that big on kissing anyway, so I don't have to worry about that as much. But I know like morning breath is going to be like, whoa, so we probably have to like sleep head to toe or whatever. Uh, like, I don't know for sure. <laughs> or, but, like, but like, yeah, you can throw mints in and everything and that'd be great. Um, but like the BO in general, like everywhere, there'll be a, a point where I'm just like, okay, fam, we need to go to a doctor to see what the fuck is going on with this. Like, I, I know at least with um, bad breath, it, it can be a bad tooth or something like that. It's, it is really manageable. Now, uh, but the full body armor, mm, crazy. I cannot. Now, for those people who are into that kind of thing, y'all do y'all. Woo! I will make sure if I find that person, I'll let you know. Look, I got your partner for you, boo. <laughs> yeah, oh God. So. Uh, with that being said, it's time to go ahead and close up this episode. Chancellor, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I truly appreciate you. Uh, do you have any last words that you would like to share with the audience? Any tips, tricks, uh, thoughts, anything? Um, I usually, I'll usually leave a quote. Um, and it's mainly, you know what I'm saying, just as far as just to help you reflect on just life and your journey um and it goes long-winded running through this life like it was mine never settling but setting every goal high 1000 burpees on the path to my own self-destruction or success but what's a mistake without the lesson you see the best teacher in life is your own experience none of us know who we are until we fail they say every person is defined by their reaction to any given situation so who would you want to define you someone else or yourself Whatever you choose, give your heart to it and stay strong. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Y'all take that word with you. Keep it. Uh, Again, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Again, I really do appreciate you for being here. To the listeners, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, Just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful. You are worthy of happiness and joy. You are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.